Candida albicans, the most important fungus that actually cause the different diseases in our body. In this lecture, we are going to discuss the different aspects of the Candida albicans. So, let's start. First of all, we will look at the general properties of the Candida. So, Candida albicans is actually the normal flora of our body that actually reside on the skin and on the mucous membrane of our body. So, most important, you will see three most important mucous membranes. First, you will see at the upper respiratory tract, okay. You will see the upper respiratory tract that is actually lined by the mucous membrane. That is actually the resident site of the Candida albicans, okay. Next, you will see the GIT tract, G I gastrointestinal tract and the most important sites of the candida albicans is the mouth and the esophagus that is again actually lined by the mucous membrane and third most important in case of female you will see the vagina that is again lined by the mucous membrane and the resident side of the candida albicans. So, here are basically the three most important mucous membrane that is actually resident site of the candida albicans. Okay. And candida albicans can also be found on the skin as well. Okay. So, here are basically the different sites of our body that is actually occupied by the candida albicans. Okay. So, important thing which you have to remember about the candida albican is that candida albicans doesn't cause any disease in the immunocompetent patient but it will cause the disease or will get the chance to cause the disease in the immunocompromised patient those patients who have low immunity then that fungus will get the chance to cause the disease in those patients okay that's the most important thing and next we will see the transmission how candida albicans enters in our body okay so most first one is the you will see the formations of the thrush in the newborn babies formation of the thrush why because during the delivery when the baby passed through the vagina so as we have discussed the vagina is actually colonized by the candida albicans when the baby passed through the vagina then most probably that baby will get the candida albicans and candida albicans will cause the thrush in the mouth okay and you will also see in case of iv drugs user okay because when you puncture the skin then at that side the candida albicans will get the chance and enter into the body okay through the iv drug injections okay and you can also see the catheter user those patients who actually use the catheters then through the catheters that candida albicans enter in our body and that can also be the uh, resident side of the candida albicans okay so here are basically the different transmissions of the candida albicans if we look at the pathogenesis so three most important line defenses of our body first second and the third in the first you will see the skin and the mucous membrane the skin and the mucous membrane so, if the candida albicans cross the skin and the mucous membrane, then that will face the second line of defense and that is the innate immunity. Innate immunity and that is non-specific. That will face the macrophages and the neutrophils. So, macrophages and the neutrophils helpful in the destruction of the candida albicans. But those patients who have low innate immunity, then that candida albicans will get the chance and cause the disease in those patients. And last third immunity, that is the 
acquired immunity and that is the uh, anti-modly mediated okay when you see the second line of defense is reduced then that patient will face the disseminated candida infections okay if you look at the clinical findings so most important finding in the mouth that is actually the formation of the thrush thrush in the mouth you will see the white flags on the tongue and around the mouth okay that is the thrush and you can also see the esophagitis infections of the esophagus when that fungus enter into the esophagus then that will cause the esophagitis specifically in those patients who have low cell mediated immunity second line of defense okay and next is the vaginitis so candida albicans also cause the vaginitis that is again the normal colonization side of the candida albicans so in the vaginitis what are the predisposing factors that actually cause the vaginitis so most important is the diabetes so in case of diabetes candida albicans will get the chance and cause the vaginitis and next is the excessive use of antibiotics when someone use antibiotic excessively then what will happen okay due to the excessive use of the antibiotic normal flora of the vagina if i say lactobacillus lactobacillus is actually the normal flora of the vagina that actually keep the ph low that's the most important thing when you use the antibiotic then you by the usage of the antibiotic lactobacillus will reduce and ultimately the ph will start increasing and increased ph is actually the favorable conditions for the candida and in the increased ph you will see the growth of the candida albicans in the vagina and cause the vaginitis in which you will see the itchiness and the discharge through the vagina so here are basically the two most important predisposing factor diabetes and the excessive use of the antibiotics okay next you will see the diaper rash diaper rash so what are the favorable conditions for the candida albicans to grow so warm and the humid condition so these are basically the two most important conditions when the candida albicans will get these condition then the candida albicans will start growing excessively and that condition is actually provided by the diaper rash when someone delay in changing the diaper of the baby then at that side you condition will be wet and the warm and that is favorable conditions for the candida and that actually called the diaper rash you will see the inflammation at the inflammation at the anal side that's the most important thing that is actually caused by the candida albicans okay and you can also see on the skin fingers and the nail infection that is actually caused by the candida albicans in those person who immerse their hand repeatedly in the water so in moist condition and the warm condition candida will get the chance to cause the skin infection specifically that will affect the nails and the finger of that person so here are basically the two most important uh, candida clinical findings next is the chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis cmc so as you see that is the chronic mucocutaneous as the name indicate you will see the involvement involvement of the mucous membrane and the skin so in that case you will see the prolonged infections of the mouth 
you can see the vagina and uh, you can see the skin that is actually caused by the candida albicans oral vagina and the skin that is chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis and that infection mostly happens in those persons who have low cell mediated immunity okay that is the most important who have low cell mediated immunity will face the chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis and in cell mediated, low cell mediated immunity mostly happens in those patients who take the immunosuppressive drugs after the transplantation. Okay. Next is the dissemination. When candida albicans will disseminate to the body. Okay. Favorable condition is actually the IV line. Through the IV line, the candida albicans can enter into the uh, blood stream. Okay. And that can also be entered through the catheter okay central line urinary okay so in the disseminated infections candida will cause the right sided endocarditis okay most important feature endocarditis specifically right sided because blood will first enter into the heart uh, through the right side so specifically right sided endocarditis and that can also cause the candidemia blood stream infection okay and last they can also cause the end ophthalmitis so here are basically the three most important disseminated infections of the candida albicans if you look at the lab diagnosis so in the tissues you will see the yeast form budding yeast or you can also see the pseudo hyphae pseudo means fall hyphae it means that they are actually the elongated yeast and they actually look like the hyphae they are not actually true hyphae so in the tissue you will see the yeast pseudo hyphae and you can also see the true hyphae as well in the tissues okay so basically yeast actually present on the mucous membrane when you take the sample then most probably that yeast will also enter into the sample so you can also see the yeast pseudo hyphae that actually invade inside the tissues and you can also see the true hyphae as well but in the culture if you do the cultures of the candida albicans then you will see the pseudo hyphae pseudo hyphae in the culture if you do at the 20 degree celsius then you will see the pseudo hyphae along with you will see the chlamydospore formation at that side so you can also see the chlamydospore formation at that side okay and last most important diagnostic feature is specifically of the candida albicans species is the germ tube formation in the serum germ tube formation in the serum at the 37 degree celsius important diagnostic features of the candida albicans while other species don't form the germ tube as well if you look at the treatment so in case of thrush you can use the oral antifungal drugs like the fluconazole fluconazole itraconazole voriconazole and you can also uh, take the echinocandine in which you will see the caspofungin and you can see the micafungin okay and in case of vaginitis, you can use the oral medication and you can use the topical. In the topical, you will see the clotrimazole and the micolazole. And in the oral medication, you will see the fluconazole in case of uh, vaginitis. Okay. In case of chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis, you can use the oral medication fluconazole and the itraconazole. And in case of disseminated, disseminated infections endocarditis candidemia and endophthalmitis you can use the uh, fluconazole and the echinocandine caspofungin 
but important thing which you have to remember you will not take these medication until the candida albicans is diagnosed by lab finding okay and these medication can vary from person to person and from place to place so this is all about the candida albicans if you still have any question regarding any one of them you may ask in the comment section thank you so much